Hey everybody, it's Firelight 457 and welcome to new system test number 16 of the Firelight MS9600 UDLS system. So anyways, let's get started. <laughs> This system test was requested by Cloud the Furry, and before I go over the devices, I just want to say I've I've did a big change to the system, and you're gonna find what that find out what that is in just a minute. So that for the initiating devices, all right, up here NAC one, he requested the system sensor mass. And it's set on swept frequency. And over here for this for NAC2, he requested the Wheelock MT set have set on bell on high volume bell. And down here for the first conventional pull station, he requested the FCI MS2. Coming over here for the for the second conventional pull station, he requested the BG10L. And now for some and now for some changes. Now This is something I just got recently. This is a Simplex 2098-9805 test switch. As you see, it has the power LED, which I have it set on non-set resettable power. And the alarm indicator is hooked up to the strobe circuit, so it'll remain lit when I silence the panel. And then down here, this was the RTS-151 that was up there but moved it down here because I'm using it as a supervisory signal and I also have a surprise to show you with it in just a minute as you can see I have this running on a PAM-1 relay. That's so I can power the green LED and the red LED together along. I also have the reset switch hooked up to this and at first I tried to get the green LED to work with the relay with the panel's relay, but the panel kept resetting itself because, unfortunately, the terminals three and two are for the reset switch, and um, the problem is terminals one and two are for the alarm indicator if you don't want to use the green LED or the reset switch. So, terminal 2 is common to both the alarm indicator and the reset switch, so that's why I had to get a relay, a um, PAM-1 relay to make this function right. But I will be testing this in this video today. We will not be testing the detectors today, so I do apologize about that. So basically what I did is I put the number one is for the alarm indicator which would make it turn red and number six that's for the power which is the green LED and I have the normally open and common wires hooked up to the this MDF dual monitor module and 
and I have the negative of the non-resettable power over to the terminal 2 of the switch. And I've got the positive of the relay hooked up to the positive of the auxiliary power. It's just kind of hard to remember how it's done. So with all that said and done, let's go ahead and start the activation. And now before I start, when I, before I activate the system, please do not pull fire alarms in real buildings or tamper with any life safety equipment out in public. I will not be responsible for your actions if you choose to do so. And please do not watch if you have epilepsy to flashing strobes or lights. By the way, here's another part of the extension. See, you got a wire going in there, and you come on over here. I got this new bell that's on, that is getting, being controlled by this, the control module. And coming out in the hallway, put a Wheelock RSS strobe out in the hallway. It's set on the strobe circuit so it'll remain flashing when I silence the system. And this is on the supervisory system. This is a Siemens CHR remote chime. And I have it set on the highest volume. Although you can't hard, even hardly hear it when that this that bell's ringing because it is extremely loud. All right. Headphone users, please turn down your volume. All right, we're going to start by pulling the FCI MS2. Here we go. In five, four, three, two, one. And that's what frequency tone is actually pretty annoying. As you can see, we've got audible silence on the Wheelock MT. And up here, the Wheelock RSS continues to flash. All right. I will not be pulling the BG12LX today. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and pull the ADT BG10L. Before I reset the system, I'm going to go ahead and reset the pull stations. Now we're just going to go ahead and reset from the annunciator. All right, and before I do the RTS 151, I'm going to go ahead and activate the simplex key switch, which is again is controlled by one of the monitor modules. 
So we're just going to go in here, put the key in here, and we're going to turn it to test. Here we go in five, four, three, two, one. As you can see, the red LED on the switch remains lit because it's on audible silence. Now we're just going to go ahead and reset the system and this LED will, red LED will shut off. Alright, and before I end the video, I'm going to go ahead and activate the supervisory system. Now this, again, the supervisory system, it activates with the RTS-151 and when I put the key put the when I put the key in turn it to test the alarm LED will turn red and that bell will ring so we're gonna go ahead and do that now I'm not gonna have the bell sounding for too long because it is extremely loud so we're going to go ahead and do it now. So, in five, four, three, two, one. As you can see, the red LED is lit, and now here's a what I next up. What I'm going to do instead of just resetting from the panel, we're just going to go ahead and reset from the key switch. So, we're just going to turn it to the left, and the system will reset. And the green LED returns. Alright, well this is going to do it for system test number 16, everybody. Special shout out to Clout the Furry for requesting this system test. Be sure to check him out. If you'd like to request a system test on the, not, the addressable system or on my main system, the description of what to do will be in the description in this video. And it's also in the description of my collection video. And be sure to check out my other fire alarm videos. I have tons of content out there you do not want to miss. Hit that like button, and I will see you next time. Peace out, everybody.